Hello, my name is Aslik Pachosian. I am a senior postdoc in the Gulfar Lab at Children's Hospital Los Angeles in the Division of Urology. Today, I'll be discussing the mechanism of podocyte damage in Alport syndrome, insights from Alport on a chip. I have no conflict of interest to disclose. I'll start off with a brief background about the kidney. The kidney has many functions. One of its main functions is to filter our blood. The functional unit of the kidney, the post in the middle portion of the drawing, is the nephron. Blood filtration occurs in the glomerules of the nephron, highlighted in the red square box, and as shown in this SEM image. You can appreciate the complexities of this particular structure. Now, one important thing to note is that no new nephrons can be generated in adult life. We are born with a set number of nephrons that could range from half a million to a million per person. The key component that allows proper blood filtration to occur is the glomerular basement membrane that is generated by the interaction between highly specialized glomerular cells, such as the podocytes, as shown above, and the endothelial cells. They deposit this particular glomerular basement membrane. Now, this uh, deposition is uh, created through the interaction of podocytes and endothelial cells. Uh, the GBM is, uh, has extracellular matrix components, laminin 5 to 1 and collagen 4 and agarin. Uh, early in development, uh, the nascent GBM actually is composed of collagen 4, alpha 1, and 2 trimers. However, the adult mature uh, glomeruli should switch this uh, to express collagen 4, alpha 3, 4, and 5. This switch is a key uh, to allowing proper glomerular filtration to occur in adult life. As you could see, the system is highly complex, and it is quite difficult to generate the system in a 2D system, spheroids, or transwell cultures of protocytes and human glomerular endothelial cells, and to replicate this filtration barrier. In patients with l syndrome, unfortunately, there is a mutation in collagen 4-alpha-3 or 4 or 5 trimer. This particular mutation uh, does not allow the the mature formation of the GPM, the switch from collagen 4 alpha 1 to trimer to collagen 4 alpha 3, 4, and 5. As you could see in this TM image, in the normal GPM versus the Alport uh, GPM, there's abnormal splits and laminated GPM. Uh, most of the patients carry the mutation for collagen 4 alpha 5, which is an X linked mutation that accounts for 85% of the cases. There's also the autosomal forms uh, of collagen 4 alpha 3 or collagen 4 alpha 4, uh, which is predominantly uh, from a recessive form or could occur from an autosomal dominant form. Patients with Alport uh, syndrome actually have many clinical manifestations. Uh, one of the main ones is that they have uh, GBM uh, structural defects. This uh, causes the infiltration of immune cells, the increased deposition of extracellular matrix, glomerular scarring, obstruction of the glomerular capillaries, reduced renal blood flow, and protein and urea causing progressive kidney failure. Patients also suffer from hearing loss and eyesight problems. Now, it is key uh, to develop a model to study this particular system. However, the development of kidney glomerular specific model is challenged by the lack of human physiological relevant models. Uh, recently, um, the human on a chip system has been quite interesting using microfluid and organ on a chip platform to study uh, various organs and in connection with one another uh, of interest is also the tubules on the chip and the kidney on the chip to really begin to understand how to target specific organ types with specific types of treatments. So how do we replicate a better glomerular filtration architecture that is devoid of barriers between endothelial uh, and podocytes to allow them to create this complex glomerular basement membrane for us to study. So we have worked with Mometis and we have used their three-lane organo, organo plate. Um, 
Basically, this particular system uses a face guide. This allows the control of channel filling, takes advantage of surface tension, and formation of a miscus by collagen. You could see over here, uh, we have the upper lane in A, B is the middle lane, and C is the lower lane. So the way we generate the glomerulus on a chip using this system uh, to create a filtration barrier is by using the middle lane, E, and uh, filling this with collagen. And then in C, we initially seed podocytes and allow them to uh, align. And then we wait 24 hours and seed endothelial cells, allow them to align, and then we place them on a shaker and allow fluid flow in channel C. The filtrate would be collected in channel F. And as you could see, there is no barrier between the podocytes and endothelial cells. So this allows them to interact with one another and create this complex glomerular basement membrane. There are multiple sources we take podocytes from. Podocytes, uh, we isolate either from directly from the kidney of human patients, or we also use our uh, amniotic fluid system where we isolate amniotic fluid uh, kidney progenitor cells. Uh, and then we differentiate these progenitor cells into podocytes. From, and we could take amniotic fluid from healthy patients and also alpert patients and isolate Podocytes from this system. For glomerular endothelial cells, which are highly specialized, we directly take them from the kidney, um, human kidney. So the way we take glomerular endothelial cells is by initially taking human kidneys, digesting them, and isolating the glomeruli shown in B. And then once we isolate the glomeruli and purify them, we digest them further and we sort them for marker CD31. CD31 is specific for endothelial cells. And once these cells have been isolated, we expand them and we test them to make sure that they are indeed endothelial cells. We see that they lack the expression of podocyte marker W21 and also nephrine. However, they are positive for CD31 shown below. We also know that they are specifically uh, expressing markers that are specific for glomerular endothelial cells, such as EDH3. We see in A, the expression of EGH3 in our cultured glomerular endothelial cells. We also see the staining, they stain positive for EGH3. And we know EDH3 is highly specific for glomerular endothelial cells. These cells also in culture are able to create this complex fenestration that are important for glomerular endothelial cell function. We also see the presence of glycocholic components such as syndican 1, 4, and hypersulfate that we show through flow analysis to show their expression along with staining. Now, human protocytes are derived from amniotic fluid cells. Uh, the way we uh, do this is by initially expanding the amniotic fluid cells in chain media and then using three markers, a CD24, obic adherent, and putaclexin, and isolating these cells uh, through flow analysis and uh, flow cytometry. We see that around 0.8 to 1.6 percent of the total amniotic fluid expanded cells are indeed positive for these three markers. We take these cells, we expand them in chunk, and then when we're ready, we differentiate a portion using red median collagen type 1 coating. After differentiation for uh, two weeks, we see that they present the protocyte morphological characteristics where we see foot processes. We've also extracted protein from the cells cultured in vitro, and we do see that they do indeed uh, uh, deposit GBM components such as collagen for alpha-3, 4, and 5, along with lamin and alpha-5 that are specifically uh, deposited by protocytes. We also see the expression of uh, protocyte specific markers to immunofluorescence, uh, immunofluorescence uh, and we see the expression of nephrine and potocine.
We've also done flow analysis on these cells to make sure that they are indeed protocytes using protocyte specific markers, such as W21 and nephrine. And we do indeed see that they are positive for both, but they lack uh, expression of endothelial markers CD31. We could also, using the same system, isolate outport protocytes as well. With the generous donation of outport patients of their amniotic fluid, we were able to isolate outport. Uh, protocytes as well. In this example, this particular patient had a mutation in collagen for alpha-5 chain. And we've taken the amniotic fluid, we've expanded the cells in chank, and then we've isolated uh, outward um, kidney progenitor cells using the three markers, CD24, obicadherin, and pediclexin. We've proceeded to differentiating these cells and we see through Western blot, uh, the human uh, total uh, kidney do indeed have expression of collagen for alpha-3, uh, collagen for uh, alpha-3 trimers, and collagen for alpha-5 expression. However, in, and also the kidney progenitor cells uh, that have been differentiated that are not outward do also express the collagen for alpha-3 and 5. However, outward uh, protocytes lack the expression of this uh, collagen 4 alpha 3, which is a characteristic of the mutation. We've also done RNA sequencing analysis of outward protocytes and um, protocytes that are not outward. And we see that indeed in outward uh, protocytes, uh, there is a higher expression of genes involved in glomerular based membrane deposition and matrix cell bond, um, along with VGF signaling and activation of phospho-3 kinase pathways. And we see a downregulation of specific markers such as WT1, uh, Limbex1, and SOF1. So now that we have our cells, uh, we proceeded to placing them on the chip. So the way we do this is we take the three lane system. We initially seed collagen in channel E, and then we proceed to seeding the protocytes. Uh, and after 24 hours, seeding the glomerular endothelial cells. And, uh, and as I said, there is no membrane between them. And then we allow them to interact. And after three days um, to a week, we see that uh, they align nicely, they are separated, and then they begin to deposit important components of the glomerular basement membrane, such as collagen 4, alpha 4, uh, collagen 4, alpha 1 and 2, and laminin alpha 5. We see the interaction of protocytes and endothelial cells and the presence of the collagen 4, alpha 3. So we've also isolated uh, these cells and we've done analysis and we do indeed see expression of collagen for alpha-3 as well with Western blot and uh, laminin alpha-5. So we see that indeed once we see the cells, um, they are able to produce the components of the glomerular basement membrane. So there's collagen for alpha-3, 4, and 5 trimers and laminin. And we've confirmed this with healthy protocytes as well that are not, uh, that are directly isolated from the kidney. So now that we have the system in place, could we create the outward glomerulus on a chip? So to model the outward syndrome, we obtained amniotic fluid from different uh, fetuses carrying the collagen 4 alpha 4 or collagen 4 alpha 5 mutation. And we've derived amniotic fluid outward uh, protocyte progenitor cells. Uh, we currently have five different lines, and our lines are generously donated by patients and are devoid of manipulations, thus they carry the natural mutation. We've taken the cells and we've uh, expanded them, the amniotic fluid, and we've isolated using the three markers as shown here for uh, to, the, to isolate the prostate progenitors, uh, which is CD24, pricolexin, obicadherin, and we've received around 1.7%. 
And we've also seeded these cells on the chip. And using the outward uh, protocytes, uh, we generated the chips and we show that there is indeed an alteration in the production of collagen 4-alpha-3 through Western blotting and staining. We see that collagen 4-alpha-4 and uh, chips that are made from uh, protocytes that are not outward do indeed deposit collagen 4 alpha 4. However, in outward chips, we see the absence of this. We also show this through Western blotting that indeed uh, in the human kidney, we see the presence of this uh, have, and also in the chips that, that are uh, in cells that are not outward, however, in the outward chip, this particular uh, expression is missing. So since we've created the chips and they seem to mimic what is occurring in vivo in patients, what about their filtration? Could we do a functional assessment on them? So we've added uh, FITSI conjugated BSA in the physiological concentration of 40 milligrams per ml in the chips that we've designed using output protocytes, uh, output protocytes and also protocytes that do not have uh, output. And we see that after five minutes, uh, the chips are not leaking, but after 60 minutes, the output protocytes began to leak. And there is a significant leakage of albumin in the output protocytes compared to uh, protocytes that are not output. So there seems to be a glomerular basement membrane defect, uh, which is a culprit of outport. And um, so we mimic this, but what about other signaling pathways that are affected during disease progression? Could we also see this using this chip system? So we were interested in MIR-193 and understanding its role in regulating glomerular homeostasis. Um, what we've done is we've done bulk RNA sequencing of output uh, protocytes versus uh, healthy protocytes, and we see an upregulation of MIR-193A. Now, upregulation of MIR-193A induces food process affectment and development of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in animal models. The downstream targets of MIR-193A are WT1 and osteopotin. So what happens in outward? Uh, in vivo, what we've seen is that indeed in mice uh, that have the mutation for collagen 4 alpha 5 do indeed have an upregulation of MIR 193A in their glomeruli. And we've also seen that they also have alteration of WT1 and osteopotin, which are the downstream targets of MIR-193A. What about our cells? Looking at the outward uh, protocytes versus healthy protocytes, we do see that, indeed see that MIR-193A is upregulated in the outward protocytes. However, one important note is that we could actually target this using antigomeres. So we show that inhibition of MIR-193A using antigomeres uh, for MIR-193A actually reverses this overexpression. So uh, mimicking the output phenotype in the glomerulus on the chip um, does the same mechanism that we see in vivo and in vitro apply to the chip. So what we did is we've created chips using output protocytes and also healthy protocytes. And then we uh, isolated the protocytes and endothelial cells and we've done qPCR on them. And we do indeed see, aside from the upregulation of MIR-193A, uh, we see alteration of its downstream targets, such as osteopotin, VGF, and WT1, in the outport versus the healthy protocytes. One important note is that glomerular endothelial cells do not express MIR-193A. So we see the same trend uh, that we saw before. What about the filtrate? Since we have this per perfect system to also collect the filtrate. So what we've done is we've performed proteomics on the outport glomerulus on the chip filtrate. 
We've corrected the filtrate and we've identified hum 80 human highly expressed proteins. We do use FBS in our media, so we've excluded the 280 bovine highly expressed proteins from the media. But from all from the 80 human highly expressed proteins that we've identified in the filtrate, we've only found 17 that were in the outward filtrate. These were serpent C1, uh, thrombospondin, fibronectin. Now, mirrors can regulate serpents. Um, glomerular dysfunction in Alport syndrome correlates with the dysregulation of serpents. So we wanted to check if we target mirror 193A, would this directly affect the serpent uh, expression as well? So what we've done is we've given Antigo mirrors uh, to the Alport glomerulosonic chip. And what we see that uh, here in normal glomerulosonic chip, we see a certain level of expression of serpent um, A3. However, in the Alport glomerulosonic chip, serpent A3 is highly expressed. But once we target mir 193 a we could actually restore the serpent A3 expression to normal. So the glomerulosonic chip uh, of Alport is an excellent system to validate our uh, mouse data, to study Alport disease, and also identify mechanisms and biomarkers we could directly target to help Alport patients. We've also validated our data uh, using digital spatial transcriptomic profiling uh, of Alport biopsies. And we've analyzed, uh, we've taken a healthy Alport, uh, healthy patient glomerulus and an Alport patient uh, glomerulus. Uh, and we've analyzed them. And we do indeed see that through principal component analysis, they are quite different. Uh, but we also confirm that there is a differential expression of thrombospondin, seroplasmin, clasminogen, and cetronectin uh, in the output patient, as we found within our filtrate also in our RNA sequencing data. The analysis still is ongoing. However, from this, uh, we could conclude that we've successfully created a barrier-free system that allows human podocytes and uh, glomerular endothelial cells to interact with one another, creating the glomerular basement membrane. And we found that they are able to correctly deposit uh, the glomerular basement membrane depending on their phenotype, while the Alport protocytes fail to create uh, the collagen for alpha 3, 4, and 5 trimer, the normal protocytes are capable of doing this, and they're also capable of preventing leakage of proteins, such as albumin. The chips could be specific, patient-specific, and um, we could see that in Alport patients, uh, the chips do leak. We've also identified a mere uh, MIR 193A as a potential target uh, to treat Alport disease. And uh, the system is versatile. So we could do disease modeling, we could do biomarkers, uh, and we could further verify this data in animal studies and also using digital spatial transcriptomics. So with that, I would like to thank my lab. Uh, our division chief, Dr. Roger De Filippo, Dr. Perrin, my PI, and Dr. DeSacco, who also co-PI'd on this uh, project. Um, and also all our collaborators and the funding that made this possible, specifically the Gold Far Kidney funding by Michael and Elisa Schenkman. Thank you.